My name is Tim Johnson. I am the president and CEO of Granite Creek Copper. I want to thank everybody today for attending the presentation and getting an update on what the company's up to. Let's see if we can get to the presentation. All right, <clears throat> there we are. So Garnet Creek Copper is a copper focused company on uh, located in the central Yukon, uh, focused on our CarMax project, which we uh, drilled in 2021 with some results still pending. Uh, our forward-looking statement is available on our website and there will be forward-looking statements made in this presentation, so I encourage you to have a look. Uh, just briefly, uh, Granite Creek is a member of a group of companies, the Metallic Group, and uh, we have a very similar business approach across all three companies in the group, which consists of Metallic Minerals, which is focused on high-grade silver, lead and zinc in the Yukon, Group 10 Metals, which is uh, PGEs plus nickel copper in the uh, Stillwater District in Montana, and then Granite Creek, the third entrant into the group, and we're focused on high-grade copper, gold, and silver in the Minto Copper District of Yukon, Canada. The similar business approach by all three companies is to acquire large brownfields land packages at the bottom of the metal cycle and then use modern exploration techniques to advance those creating long-term shareholder value. But we're going to get into our, our CarMax project, the Granite Creek's CarMax project. Um, this project um, we acquired in 2020 uh, has a, a mineral resource uh, existing on it and a current um, uh, preliminary economic assessment, uh, both published in 2017. Um, that mineral resource contains just under 24 million tons, grading 0.85% copper, 0.31 grams gold, and 3.4 grams silver, giving us a uh, just under uh, half a billion pounds contained copper, split roughly two thirds oxide uh, material and one third sulfide. But we see the real potential here to be the underlying sulfide resource, which quite often underlies the oxide. We think it could be two to three or even larger times um, bigger than the oxide resource. So that's what our focus has been since we got a hold of the project is developing that sulfide resource. And of course, that PEA completed in 2017 was using much lower metal prices than what we see today. They were using 325 copper for the base case and 1350 gold. So once uh, we input the higher metal prices into the PEA that we want to update, we expect uh, the economics to uh, improve significantly. So we did complete just over 10,000 meters of drilling on the project this year. Um, the focus of that drilling was resource expansion, uh, primarily in the sulfide domain. Um, most of the assays we've received, we delivered to the market. There is a few drill holes uh, pending, which uh, we expect any day now, and we will be releasing that. And then um, we also initiated the development of an updated mine plan and to include the optimization of the, the current oxide resource and to bring the uh, sulfide uh, resource into an updated mine plan. So uh, we will be updating our resource estimate um, by the end of the first, uh, first quarter this year. And of course, uh, on the back of that, we would be developing a new preliminary economic assessment uh, to be delivered to the market by uh, mid-year, mid by the end of the second quarter. So <clears throat> the project's infrastructure is actually quite good. Um, when people hear that we're in the Yukon, they think we're, it, it's probably a remote project but we're within 12 kilometers of grid power, hydroelectric power, and we're within about 30 kilometers of uh, paved highway. Uh, we access that paved highway through all weather road maintained by the Yukon government. And once you get to that paved highway that leads through the village of Carmax, uh, the capital of, of the Yukon Whitehorse, and ultimately to a deep water port at Skagway, Alaska, where there's offtake facilities that uh, currently uh, uh, will accept uh, concentrate for shipping overseas. So currently the mental mine delivers their concentrate uh, through Skagway. So everything's in place for the development of our project. Uh, major investments continue to be uh, uh, made in the Yukon and we continue to see this jurisdiction as an excellent place to work. Uh, Rio Tinto uh, invested over $26 million in Western Copper last year. Um, and they invest in that in the casino project, which is literally just on the road from our project. And in 2017, the Yukon and federal governments committed to spending over $360 million in infrastructure upgrades that directly affect our project. So basically, we've got other parties uh, uh, building all our infrastructure for us, which is always good. 
And then we get asked quite often um, where our company is at on the, in the development phase and, and you know, what is a good metric to value the company at? Um, so we are a preliminary economic assessment, a PEA stage company. And uh, based on where our peers are trading and, you know, historically, you would expect a PEA stage company to trade somewhere between one to 2% of the uh, spot value of the contained metal that they have in the ground. Um, so we're, again, we're just under uh, a half a billion pounds contained copper, and we're trading just below the 1% mark. So we, we see that as a good entry point for, for investors, because not only um, do we expect a, as the market starts to, uh, to learn more about the company to um, in increase into that 1% to 2% value, but based on last year's drilling, we expect to significantly grow that resource as well. And that should be a revaluation for the company. And as we update the PEA and move towards PFS, again, there should be a couple of potentials along the way in the near term for revaluation, just based on the work that we're doing. <clears throat> so the the uh, the Carmax deposit or Carmax project, uh, which includes the Carmax deposit, is uh, just under 177 square kilometers of highly prospective ground. Um, about two thirds of that we we acquired directly from a Yukon prospector, which includes um, some high grade uh, um, zones of, of 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 potential resources, and then uh, of course it includes the Carmax deposit itself, which we acquired in uh, uh, November of 2020. So not only <clears throat> do we have a significant resource um, started at the Carmax deposit, but we've got multiple zones that we're going to be following up on. Uh, this field season and, and and other other years and enable to be to be able to grow those resources as well. And then at the Carmax deposit itself, we've uh, we before we went and drilled in 2021, we wanted to look at the potential that we felt that the zones could host um, in order to grow the resources beyond the uh, the mine life contemplated in the 2017 PEA. So again, the 2017 PEA only looked at a portion of the oxide ore. And it looked at zones one, four, and seven, which are contained in the uh, the upper ellipse in, in in the map on the screen. Um, and it contemplated a five thousand ton per day mill of of um, uh, processing oxide ore, um, but that was it. So when we got a hold of the project, we looked at those zones and and we felt that if we could find a way to bring the sulfide um, resources that were existing but hadn't had a mine plan wrapped around them, if we could find a way to bring them into a mine plan, we could probably add sort of between three to five years of mine life, giving us a, a target of a 10 to 12 year mine life in the sulfide and oxide combined in those zones. Then we looked at zone 2000 South, and we saw a, an additional two to three years of the oxide and sulfide material combined before we did any significant drilling. And then in zone 13, we saw an additional three to four years of potential mine life. So our goal here is to get the, uh, the potential mine life under an updated PEA into the 15 uh, a year plus range. So I think you know, based on the studies that we've done, we're, we're probably there yet, but there, there is some work yet to do. And of course, all three zones saw drilling um, that we completed on them in 2021. So there, there could be even more potential mine life there once we once we update that resource. So um, let's just talk a little bit about the drilling that we did do. So in zone one at CarMax, which was one of our prime targets last year, we did drill. And what we wanted to do here was to really look at the, the underlying sulfide. So at about 200 meters below surface, the ore transitions from an, from an oxide ore to a sulfide ore. And so again, we drilled that sulfide. And, and one of the interesting things to note on, on this image is that when we did intercept sulfide mineralization, uh, the grade that we intercepted was consistently higher than the grade that had previously been published in the sulfide domain. So this looks very good for us, not only be able to grow that resource, but also to be able to um, increase the grade there. So increased tonnage, increased grade means increased economics. And then um, we did actually drill at 2000 South as well. Remember this zone is just a little bit South of, of the zones one, four and seven. And we intercepted one of the best holes in the 2021 campaign in this zone where we intercepted 105 meters grading 0.96% copper or a 1.18% copper equivalent, including 21 meters of 2.17% copper. 
Um, and the interesting thing to note is that the entirety of the mineralized section of this drill hole was below the current resource model. So we expect not only to be able to increase grade in this zone, but also to be able to add significant tonnage to this zone, again, expanding the, the, the potential mine life here. So we're pretty excited about that and we're very eager to see the, uh, the resource update. And another zone that, that we did a little bit of work on in, in 2020 and we followed up in 2021 was zone A. And this is in the northern part of the claim block, about 10 kilometers away from the CarMax deposit itself. Um, so there had been no significant work done here since the 1980s. We did um, a small drill campaign on it in 2020. And the purpose of that drill campaign was to confirm the tenure of the mineralization that had been noted in, in the 1980s. Um, and we noted some really high grade intercepts, including 4.3% copper and 3.4 grams gold over 4.6 meters, showing us that high grade material is, is, is possible here. Um, but we, we didn't do um, any significant drilling here in, in 2021 um, because we're still uh, confirming the orientation of the mineralization and the size potential of the zone. So what we did do though, is we did an induced polarity survey, an IP survey. Um, so this survey, uh, we used uh, electric probes to detect whether or not the rock would conduct electricity or whether, the, or whether or not the rock would hold a charge, like a large battery. And the, um, those two properties of the rock can help us detect uh, sulfide mineralization. So we have a, a good success. We developed um, over 20 new targets um, based on the work that was done um, with this, this geophysics survey. And we're quite eager to get uh, boots back on the ground um, this summer and follow up on some of those target areas and perhaps drill a few holes in them. Uh, we also brought in a, a company called Sedgman Canada um, and another company called Mining Plus. Now, now Sedgman Canada is a, uh, a process engineering firm. So they help design the processes for mineral extraction. Um, and they were helping us determine uh, what was the best uh, technique to extract the sulfide mineralization, to extract the copper from the sulfide. And we also wanted to confirm that the technology proposed by previous operators for leaching the oxide material was the most appropriate and most cost effective. Um, and there's a bunch of optimization work and metallurgical work that they were doing for us. And then we wanted to um, determine what uh, underground mining method might be used later on in the potential mine life when eventually that would go underground. So quite successful with the work that they did. Um, it showed us that the sulfide ore responds quite well to conventional flotation technology that is used around the world. Um, it is a well-known technology, so we're, we're quite pleased about that. There's nothing exotic about the, the uh, processing of the sulfide. And then we also um, confirm that the uh, in-vat leach that was proposed by uh, previous operators that will extract not only the copper, but the precious metals um, from the oxide ore is, it seems to be the most economic. And then for an underground method, um, it looks like a, a sub-level cave or, or a variation of a block cave um, will work quite well based on the, the, um, the orientation and, and, and the shape of the, uh, of the mineral bodies that, that we're seeing. So all very good work. And all of this work, of course, is leading to an updated PEA, a preliminary economic assessment, which again, we want to deliver to the market by, uh, by the end of the second quarter uh, of this year. So I just want to uh, speak briefly about the geology of, of the mental copper belt itself. Um, this is quite a unique geological setting. The, uh, the copper mineralization is hosted within metamorphic rock, um, which is, is unusual. Uh, what you get is you get the tabular bodies or, or, or rafts, if you will, of, of, of mineralized metamorphic rock that extend in a line from, from south of the CarMax deposit uh, through our CarMax North target and all the way up to, to Mintel and beyond. And um, this, is, uh, this is unique. I mean, the, the, the conventional um, um, thinking or the, the, the current thinking here is that um, this was a, a, a large porphyry system maybe at, at one time, uh, uh, sub subsequent, subsequently being consolidated and the mineralization has been remobilized in, into these high grade rafts, um, which extend in the line, um, like I said. And, and the opportunity here was, is that in the 1980s, when one company held most of the belt, um, this was poorly understood. Um, 
And I think probably what they were looking for, they were looking for one large continuous ore body at the time uh, and they weren't finding it. But what we now know is, is that these, these tabular bodies, they repeat themselves. Uh, they repeat themselves at strike and they repeat themselves um, at depth too. So, so once you've tied into one of them, you're going to find another one nearby. And we, we've seen that at CarMax with, with the multiple zones that we've been able to, to work on. Uh, we've seen strong indications at CarMax North uh, target area, and it's, it's well known at, at the Minto Mine. So just a few words about, about the Minto Mine. Um, nice uh, a reserve grade there of just over 1.7% copper. I think on a copper equivalent basis, it's probably around 2%. Um, quite a high grade concentrate that they're producing. Um, but the, the interesting thing to note is the mineralogy of, of their deposit and ours is quite similar. Um, again, it's it's these high grade uh, metamorphic material rock that, that contains a mineral. Uh, it's a boronite, uh, calcopyrite um, ore that they're processing. And we see quite a lot of boronite and calcopyrite in, in, in our ore as well. Um, uh, yeah, high grade concentrate, export term, terminal at Skagway. Um, and they, they, they run about a 4,000 ton per day operation. I think they run about 3,500 tons last year. And I know uh, the guys there are working really hard to get that up to nameplate capacity and, and, and probably a little bit more. So just uh, to summarize on where the company is from, a, um, from the, our launch in January, 2019, um, we've moved very quickly. Um, within 24 months, we, uh, be, we've gone from an early stage copper play to a resource stage company. And then in 2021, we launched an aggressive campaign to grow those resources uh, with 10,000 meters of drilling, uh, 20 line kilometers of reduced polarity survey. Um, uh, we retained a firm called Goldspot Artificial Intelligence. Um, and what they do quite well is they use AI, artificial intelligence, to parse large data sets and use uh, pattern recognition to uh, um, develop new targets that sometimes might be no overlooked by, by geologists or, or just, you know, having all that data to go through can, can take some, some, some time. So it's a, it, it's a unique um, uh, model that's been used quite a bit in industry, and we're pretty pleased with the work that we've done. And, eager to get on the ground and follow up on some of the targets they've developed for us. And of course, we, we initiated development of a new mine plan um, that's gonna include the sulfide ore and uh, all the oxide material that, that we can. Um, and that again will be the, the, uh, the subject of the updated PEA. Uh, we uplisted to the OTC QB um, um, on the OTC platform. And then upcoming news, we still have a, a couple drill holes that, that we're waiting on final drill results. And once that is all in and collated, uh, we'll be delivering that to the market. Um, we will, of course, be updating our resource once those drill results are complete. Uh, we'll be discussing the, uh, the gold spot results uh, with the market at some point here. And again, we'll be updating our preliminary economic assessment by uh, hopefully by the end of the second quarter. And of course, our 2022 drill plans will, um, will be delivered to the market once we finalize those. And then uh, just, for, uh, uh, just for the viewers who are not um, that familiar with the copper market, um, there's a couple of things I'd like to say about it. And one is one of the big drivers of the copper price, which has been seeing some very good um, strength in, in 2021, and, and we see it continuing, is the, the conversion of the global fleet to, um, to battery or, or hybrid vehicles. Um, if you are driving an ICE or an internal combustion engine vehicle, you have uh, roughly 33 pounds of copper in your vehicle. And if you were to go out and buy a brand new Tesla or some of the other electric vehicles, battery electric vehicles on the market, that would jump by five and a half times. And the thing to remember that this is new demand. So this is over and above the conventional industrial demand for copper. Um, so we see that as very positive for the copper price. And of course, as we move from um, the, the global energy from uh, uh, fossil fuels to renewables and other sources, the demand for copper is going to increase as well. As we look at solar, wind, uh, tidal, all those things have, have a huge demand on copper. So the, the, the copper use is just going up and um, we see consumption going up and we see uh, potential mine supply disruptions in, in some of the South American countries that are um, that starting to have some geopolitical risk to them. So great space to be in. And I encourage you, even if you're not um, investing in, in, in Granite Creek, that you look at some of the other copper names out there. But I think you'll find that, that um, the stage that our company in is, is a very good place to be. 
So just a little bit about our exploration team. We've got a very strong team. Um, the fact that we are a part of a group of companies allows us to attract better talent than you would from a standalone company. Uh, we're able to keep our, uh, our uh, people engaged, uh, working on multiple projects and, and working year round. And we're able to attract specialists in their in their fields that uh, again that we wouldn't uh, normally be able to attract on with just a, with just a single jun junior mining company. And then the track record of success in the group, um, Greg Johnson, chair of the group, uh, was one of the founders of Nova Gold. Um, uh, it started uh, really started to get traction in the early 2000s, um, where they took uh, projects like Donlan and Galore Creek from modest resources to world class assets with uh, multiple billion dollar market caps. Um, with those companies, so um, yeah, we're we're he's Greg's brought a lot of his team over from his days with uh, Nova Gold um, Explorationists, and we've added a project to the the uh, the group every year from 2016 through 2019, and now we are advancing projects um, in in all three companies, uh, either with formal resources or near term formal resources, and growing those resources in all cases. So good group to keep your eyes on and uh, you can, yeah, bookmark all, all three companies. And then just uh, our share structure, currently 131 million shares out, uh, to about 51 million warrants, giving us uh, 100 and uh, actually it should be 180 uh, uh, on a fully diluted basis. Um, market cap uh, just around 20, 22 million, depending on the day, we're trading around between 15 and 17 cents, uh, just about 2 million cash on hand. And um, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you again for you uh, for uh, uh, your attention. Uh, you should bookmark the symbol GCX on the TSX Venture or GCXXF traded on the OTCQB. Thanks everybody. Enjoy the rest of the conference. We were able to consolidate 177 square kilometers of highly prospective ground in the southern end of the Minto Copper Belt deposit itself currently is just under 24 million tons measured and indicated grading at a 0.85% copper giving us just under half a billion pounds contained copper. We had great success at, at Zone 2000 South. We were able to extend the mineralization at depth between 30 and 130 meters deeper than what had been previously known. Granite Creek is a fairly young company. We were launched in January 2019. Within a very short period, we've gone from an earlier stage copper play to a resource company. We're working very, very hard to grow those resources and to bring those expanded resources into a comprehensive mine plan uh, targeting 15 plus years. Results continue to come out. Uh, we're working with an engineering firm, Sedgman, and with a mining firm, Mining Plus, to update the current PEA. There'll be a new resource estimate first quarter of next year. Companies hitting high-grade copper mineralization in a very good jurisdiction with a starter resource and just working to build on that.